The sponsor of this video is Cell Cashier. Cell Cashier will provide you a quick quote and the most money for your iPhone. I sold an old broken iPhone 5 to them and it was simple, fast, and secure. So the OnePlus One comes from a new company called OnePlus based out of China. Their whole campaign is never settle. So we're going to see if they actually did settle uh, in the throughout this video. But I want to talk about the company first. Now they, they're doing something a little different than the mainstream companies we know today. They hardly pay anything for advertising. You don't see an advertisement of them before YouTube video or on TV or anything. Their first advertisement campaign was actually the invite system. By having an invite system that created a lot of hype around the device because people wanted to get their hands on a OnePlus One. But then another advertisement campaign was Ladies First. Now this was a total failure, a total sexist failure where they would ask ladies to take selfies and send it in and then the best liked ladies to get a free phone or a free invite. Awful idea. I could have marketed the phone better than that, but they did take it back. They were like, you know what? Never mind. That's a bad advertisement. So kudos for them for realizing that that was not a good idea, but they shouldn't have done it in the first place. But company aside, this is not about the company. This is a review of the phone, the OnePlus One. <laughs> Shifting focus onto this phone, it's been dubbed a lot of names. Now, it comes in at $300 for the 16GB silk white version, or $350 for this sandstone black 64GB variant. I'll say that again, $300 for a 16GB unlock, and $350 for a 64GB version unlock. That in itself is incredible. Now, OnePlus has a very interesting and impressive product on their hands, but whether it lives up to the name of the flagship killer, Let's find out. Alright, so as for looks, the OnePlus One has a great design, including the soft touch back on the back of the phone, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, probably the best design implementation is the chrome painted ring around the device. Now, I don't know if it's plastic or metal, I don't know how to figure that out, but it looks really good, especially with the totally blacked out front. It's a very sexy accent, I guess, uh, to the black front and then either the black or white back. Alright, so as for size, it is pretty big. We're looking at a 5.5 inch screen surrounded by a pretty considerably large bezel. So yeah, obviously you're getting a pretty large device with that screen size and the bezel, but it's still manageable even with small hands like mine. I mean, I'm usually using it two-handed, very rarely one-handed, but you kind of know that when you're buying a phablet of this size. As for build quality, it's got a really solid build quality. It feels good in the hand and the back is soft to the touch. The material, it's pretty hard to describe. A fellow YouTuber, Austin Nwak to to Austin N called it a hard velvet or soft sandpaper type material. I really like that description, but if we're going straight from the material manufacturer, it's going to be called baby skin. I baby skin does not apply to it, but it is protective and it is soft. I kind of like hard velvet the best out of all of them. As for durability, so far so good. I've dropped it a couple of times, of course not on like concrete or anything, but it's been good so far. It hasn't broken or anything. I will be honest though, the screen worries me a lot. It's protruding from the body just a few millimeters, but that means that there's nothing protecting it from the impact, so if you drop it face down, it's literally shattering the screen on impact. Now, I want to talk about the feel of the OnePlus One, because the silk white and sandstone black variant both have the soft baby skin texture that is actually pretty soft, but then there's also going to be replaceable backs like wood or Kevlar and stuff like that, that because the back covers so much of the phone, that's actually going to completely change the feel and look of the phone. So if it's wood, you're going to kind of turn it into a wood phone or Kevlar, you're going to turn it into a Kevlar phone. So it really depends on what back you have on your phone. All of those previous things kind of had to do with the form of the phone. Let's move on to the function. Now, first up is the IO, the input output or the buttons on the phone. So on the front we have the very dimly lit capacitive buttons, a call speaker, and the front facing camera. On the bottom we have dual speakers, a micro USB port, and one of three microphones. On the right we have a very lonely, sad little power button. On the top we have a 3.5mm headphone jack and the second microphone. On the left we have that SIM tray and the volume rockers over there. And on the back we have a camera and the third microphone. Overall, the button placement is pretty ergonomic for the phone's large size. I find myself using it when I do use it one-handed. Uh, it's pretty easy. All the buttons are reachable with either my thumb or my pointer finger. So overall, good job on OnePlus in terms of button placement for ergonomics. All right, so moving on to specs, this phone is loaded with top-notch specs. Even though it has an extremely inexpensive price tag, it's still loaded. In terms of important specs, we're looking at a 2.5 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 801 processor backed by an Adreno 330 GPU, 
powering a 5.5 inch 1080p IPS display with 3 gigabytes of RAM, 3 gigabytes of RAM under the hood, a 13 megapixel rear facing camera, and a 3100 milliamp hour battery to power it all. As for the display, it is a 5.5 inch 1080p IPS display with a pixel density of 401 ppi, so it's really sharp. So the screen has a slightly warm color temperature, which is annoying and people complain about a yellow tint, but you can change that in the new update. Now something you can't change is the stuck pixel on my screen. Ugh, that's so annoying, but it's not big enough a deal to return it or anything, it's just kind of there bothering me in the back of my head. But overall, it's good for gaming, good for video watching, great screen, other than that stupid stuck pixel. Moving on to the camera, I've been really impressed with both the front facing and back facing camera. On the front we have a 5 megapixel front facing camera, perfect for selfies trust me. On the back we have a 13 megapixel rear facing shooter. Now jumping into the camera app, not literally, you can just swipe between modes by going up or down which will be like HDR or like filters like aqua. And then if you go into the manual settings you have a lot of customizability. You can change like your ISO, the quality percentage, and in terms of video you can even change the codec. So that's, that's a pretty big deal. Um, in terms of video actually you can record 4K and slow motion video so those are two pretty cool features that I I did do a video about and now here are some sample photos I'm just gonna keep talking as you're looking at them uh, sample photos you can actually see that the HDR looks really good compared to the regular photos I'm personally a huge fan of HDR but I know a lot of people don't like it because it's a little less realistic I guess I don't know um, so I'm gonna do this for about 10 more seconds you're gonna just keep looking at pictures so how you doing it's a nice day out it's a Friday for me this will, this will probably be uploaded Saturday so yeah all right I'm gonna end this now okay as for the sound, it gets pretty loud. The dual speakers at the bottom are fairly impressive when it comes to volume, but it does get muddy or gross or some bad adjective when you get to that high volume. One of the pre-installed apps is Audio FX, which serves as a pretty good equalizer, so if you want to fine-tune the way you're hearing your music on your headphones, this app will actually get the job done. And then also I noticed something when the screen is locked and music is playing, there's kind of like a live equalizer thing showing the music playing. I can't describe it, so just look on screen now. It looks pretty cool, and actually I've showed it to a few friends, and they think it's cool too. So, uh, nice touch. Now the operating system is always important for phones, especially this phone. This phone's rocking CyanEngineMod 11S, which is a custom version of Android 4.4.4 KitKat made for this phone. So this is kind of like the CyanogenMod phone. The operating system is made for the hardware and you get a lot of customizability. Now, CyanogenMod 11S is super customizable, starting with the theme store. You have basically any theme you could ever want. You can make your phone look like an LG G3, HTC One M8, really any phone or any like variety or custom Frankenstein version of a bunch of different phone uh, softwares. You can also have custom buttons. You can either have the dim capacitive buttons that I used for about a week or the on-screen buttons that I switched over to and I'm not looking back. Now you can also customize your icons, your boot animation, your lock screen. Really you have a ton of options here. You also have off-screen gestures that you can use for like flashlight, music control, and opening the camera app, but I've disabled all of those because they can get a little bit buggy. I have had some bugs in previous updates and still in the new 4.4.4 KitKat update. The worst bug of all, I don't know if it's just my device or if it's every device, is the touchscreen sometimes not responding. This is so aggravating. If the touchscreen just doesn't respond sometimes, I'll have a video playing right now, it's so annoying because I can't do anything about it. I just kind of have to wait it out or reboot the phone by force like closing it and force shutting it off by holding the power button. Very annoying. Other bugs included were like the off-screen gestures going on too easily. But other than that, every bug has been fixed by the updates, so I'm fairly impressed, other than the uh, not working screen that bothers me. Speaking of updates, OnePlus has been really good about giving over the air updates. Now, I did get mine like four days late, but that's not even that big of a deal, and I've already gotten a couple of updates, and I've only had it for like two months. So good job OnePlus on the updates, and they also promised that within 90 days of the release of Android L, they would provide the Android L update for this phone. So, you know what? You know, good, good job, OnePlus. I'm I'm happy with that. Um, another thing worth mentioning with CyanEngineMod 11S is the built-in app Screencast. Now this isn't a huge deal to a lot of people, but for other people that like recording their the screen of their phone, whether it be for like an app tutorial on YouTube or something, it's built into the device and it's really fluid. It shows where you're touching and everything. Um, I think it's a really nice addition that you don't have to download anything else to record your screen. It's just built into the phone. Speed. Now speed is often kind of not important with phones because it's not important how fast the phone is, it's about how fluid the phone is. And I've already mentioned that gaming and watching videos is really fluid and really fast on this phone, but that's not it. Multitasking is also very quick on this phone, I haven't noticed any lag switching between apps or opening new ones or anything. 
And very interestingly, the OnePlus One is the number one phone on the Antutu benchmark. Now I'll run it right now and you can see it's above every other phone, above the HTC One M8, the Samsung Galaxy S5, the LG G3. It's literally the top tier phone in terms of speed for this benchmark, which is a very good testament to the whole never settle campaign. Let's talk about battery life. I love this subject with this phone because it's incredible. With a 3100 milliamp hour battery, this phone lasts a very long time. It, it could last two days on light usage. iPhones have less than 2000 uh, milliamp hours of battery life. And then even the new 5.5 inch iPhone is rumored to have around 2900 milliamp hours of battery. So this is kind of ahead of the game with a 3100 milliamp hour battery. And it lasts a very long time because I guess the battery optimization in Cyanogen Model 11S is extremely top notch. Other things worth mentioning is that there's no expandable storage. So if you need expandable storage like a micro SD card slot, uh, too bad. But the 64 gigabyte option is only $50 more unlocked. So there's really no excuse there. You can just get the more expensive option and it's plenty of space. And then also the battery is non-removable. Now, as I mentioned, the battery life is incredible, at least after two months. So you don't need to replace it. And I'm sure if you sent it back, they would replace it for you if it got like killed or really bad or something, but it is not replaceable. And the back is kind of hard to take off in the first place. So there's that. All right, conclusion time. I'm gonna conclude this video by asking you a question. Is it worth it to you? Do you think the drawbacks that I mentioned ruin the phone for you? Because personally, I don't think they do. Other than the touchscreen issue, which might just be specific to me, this phone is fantastic. The very few and kind of minor drawbacks don't damage the experience for me at all, and I'm very happy to own this phone. Let's talk a little bit more about this phone, though. How is it so cheap? Now, I don't know the whole story. You can watch some other videos for that. But basically, from my understanding, the lack of an advertising and marketing budget allows for the cheaper phone. They're not paying millions of dollars like Samsung is to get all those ads on Super Bowl and all that kind of stuff on TV and YouTube. They're just spreading by word of mouth. They are creating hype and allowing us to spread it for them. So we're kind of advertising for them by talking about the phone. Literally, this review is advertising for them. Um, it's kind of confusing, but the fact that they don't have that huge marketing budget allows them to take less money and still keep profiting on the phones. But remember, some of their advertisement attempts are sexist and awful, so there's kind of a seesaw. It can be good or bad. All right, so that wraps up this review. I worked really hard on this review. It took me a really long time to make this review. So if you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I love you. Um, thank you for watching in general and subscribe for more content. And of course, Stay classy. Now, before I head out, I do want to talk about Cell Cashier again. I know you guys don't love advertisements, but they really do help the channel out, and I want to thank Cell Cashier for supporting this channel. I honestly, I wouldn't recommend a service that I haven't tried out before and could vouch for their quality. When I sold the iPhone 5, the broken iPhone 5 to Cell Cashier, they sent a pre-labeled and pre-protected package to my door that I literally just took the iPhone, put it in the package, and shipped it back out, and then I got paid. Cell Cashier only purchases select iPhones and currently only operates in the United States, but it is simple, fast, and secure. You get a quote, you ship your iPhone, and you get paid. It couldn't be easier.